Hello, this is me from the future just coming in to say that this vlog starts off as a pretty random weekly vlog, that was my plan, but then it turns into a reading vlog for A Little Life and then also a little bit of a reading vlog for Fifty Shades Freed but mostly focusing on A Little Life and I'm not going to delete all the clips I took or like cut them up and stuff just for the sake of keeping things neat and clean but I just thought I'd let you know, so yeah, I'll let you get into the real video now. Hey what's up you guys, I'm just starting a random vlog right now because I was like, you know what, I just feel like vlogging, I actually really love making vlogs and there's no theme to this vlog at all, it's just going to be random week of my life maybe, although I'm working quite a lot this next week so who knows where it will end but anyway the point is this is a random vlog. I am currently reading Fifty Shades Darker so I originally wanted to do a reading vlog, like how I destroyed this because actually it was like second hand. Um, I wanted to do a reading vlog for this series and I was like, you know what, I honestly, like, I really thought about it, I sat down and I was like, can I do this? And I was like, I cannot bring myself to talk on camera about the details of these books. I just couldn't. Like, I wanted to, I really thought it would be fun, like it would have been a fun vlog but I honestly just couldn't. But honestly god, like, I'm not gonna lie, these are such a guilty pleasure book, like, I, I'm just obsessed with them. Um, I love, I mean, you've talked, I've talked on this channel before about, like, my thoughts on, like, dark romance and stuff, like, I just love like toxic romances and like obsession, stuff like that. So these are just like perfect because like they're so, like, their relationship is so unhealthy but that's what's fun about it. And I actually was going to start a reading vlog for A Little Life. I read 50 pages and me and Andrew were going to do like a joint reading vlog type thing. But we both started it and we were both like not really in the mood to read it. I don't know, like I'm on exactly page 50 which is like halfway through a chapter. <laughs> um, it's just boring, actually, not gonna lie, I was bored and I think the issue with it is, is that I know so much of what happens anyway, like, I know, I don't want to spoil it for anyone that doesn't, but like, I, I know most of the stuff that happens in this, um, in like a bullet point kind of format and it's just gonna be so depressing and I just don't really want to read it right now, I'm just such, such a mood for like happy, fun reads and Fifty Shades is a happy, fun read, uh, so easy to read, like, even just like these 50 pages, I swear it took me so long. And, like the text isn't even that much bigger. Like the text is like the same size as 50 shades, but I mean obviously it's more literary, so I don't know. It was just taking me so long to read. But yeah, 50 shades is so funny and my favourite thing is Anna has this whole inner goddess monologue thing and someone wrote a list online. I was like, I need a list of like all of these things that she says and I'm gonna read some of my favourites to you right now. So according to this list, there's 57 individual things that the inner goddess does. So, some of my favourites, just randomly off this list. My inner goddess has stopped dancing and is staring too, open mouth and drooling slightly. My inner goddess sits in the lotus position looking serene. My inner goddess nods in silent zen-like agreement. My inner goddess is jumping up and down, clapping her hands like a five-year-old. My inner goddess shakes her head at me. My inner goddess glows so bright she can light up Portland. My inner goddess jumps up and down with cheerleading pom-poms. My inner goddess is not pleased. My inner goddess is doing backflips in a routine worthy of a Russian Olympic gymnast. My inner goddess smacks her lips together, glowing with pride. My inner goddess bounces up and down like a small child waiting for ice cream. Like, it is so often, and, and that's all, like, there's 57 in the first book alone, and I'm gonna say, in the second book, there's not been as many inner goddess moments, like, there's still been quite a few, but she's toned it down a little bit, but I just think it's so funny, and when she's not about the inner goddess, there's another one called the subconscious, and she's, the inner goddess is more, like, pro-sex, and the subconscious is more, like, shy, and sometimes they have a little back, back and forth inside Anna's head. <laughs> it's so funny, like, I honestly, like, would recommend these books so much. Like, obviously they're not good literature, like, they're not the most well written. I mean, there's 57 instances of the inner goddess, but that's not the point, you know what I mean? Like, if you're wanting something that's just fun to read, you cannot go wrong with these. <laughs> I think something that's also put me off of A Little Life a little bit is there's all this discourse right now about the author obviously being an Asian American woman and writing so much trauma about gay men and people are really like analysing what that means and like what that says about her and I honestly do not care about own voices to be honest like I think that if you are writing a book about your own experiences yes use own voices to promote it like that is an amazing thing to do you know like write about your own experiences but i think that this whole idea that you have to write about your own experiences and authors that write about you know characters that don't reflect them in any way i think that's honestly really dangerous and damaging to art and to literature and it's just so restricting to authors and i don't know i just really don't like it so the fact that that's even a thing like a whole conversation about this book 
Like, I don't actually really care about it that much, but it's just like such like, it's just really prominent in my mind right now because I'm seeing it everywhere on Twitter and stuff like that. And I don't know, I just think that the whole on voices thing is like, I think it was such a good, honest, like great idea that it's now been twisted into something that rather than celebrating authors that are writing own voices, it's being used to demonize authors that are going outside of own voices. And I don't think that was the original purpose of the movement. So yeah, I don't know, that's just like stuck in my mind while I'm reading as well. And I think that, to be fair, like I have seen that apparently both of our other books also deal with, you know, like sexual assault to gay males. And people are like, okay, why is she writing about this in three different books? And like, to be fair, I will agree, like that is a bit of a strange recurring theme for someone to write about. Like fair enough in one book, but like three is, I'm like, okay, I do get it, it's a bit weird. But I don't know, I just think that there's so much discourse around like this book that I just can't bring myself to read it. Cause I'm like, it's just, Physically, it's such a heavy book. Emotionally, it's a heavy book. Discourse-wise, it's a heavy book. Like, there's just so much to it that I just... <laughs> I threw that way further than I meant. I just don't want to unpack it right now. Okay, please skip this entire clip if you don't want spoilers for it. Fifty Shades Darker. But I have to share this because I actually just screamed out loud. Also, please ignore my hair. So, <laughs> Anna was threatening to leave Christian and... He was like, no, and he threw himself on his knees into like, <laughs> and <laughs> this submissive pose that she has to do for him. And then like looks up in her eyes like, and she was like, wait, I'll just read that. Holy fuck, Christian, the submissive. No, I actually screamed, I can't. That's too funny, that's too funny. <laughs> this changes everything. Okay, so since we last spoke, I finished Fifty Shades Darker and I've now started Fifty Shades Freed. Fifty Shades Darker was actually so good and such like a guilty pleasure type way. Like, obviously, it's not a good book, blah, 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 but it was just so fun. It was an absolute roller coaster. It was, it was literally like a soap opera. Like, every single chapter ends on such a cliffhanger. Like, it was just so fun to read. So, I'm <laughs> straight into Fifty Shades Freed and hopefully, this one is the same. I've only read 100 pages of it. 60 pages so far, but yeah. And I also gave A Little Life a little bit of a chance <laughs> after my big rant the other day. I have read up to page 120, so page like 0 to 50, I was kind of bored, not gonna lie, like I've already spoke about. And then page 50 to 100, I actually was genuinely really getting into it, and then I put it down, had lunch, blah blah blah, came back, and page 100 to 120, like I was just bored again, like I don't know what it is. It just feels like it's meandering, it's going nowhere, it's like telling me all this information about like the character's past which obviously like is a good thing normally but I felt like it was just so relevant I feel like it was just going nowhere so yeah I'm slowly chugging my way through this a little bit at a time I am I think I am going to commit to trying to read a bit of it every day I wasn't sure if I was going to DNF or you know like read a little bit every day I think I'm going to read a little bit every day I'm going to try and aim for like 60-ish pages a day I would love to do 100 a day but I don't know but my main focus right now is this classic Fifty Shades Freed. So my current progress in my books is about 310 and about page 430 and I actually have had a total 180. I'm actually really enjoying A Little Life more than Fifty Shades currently. Like once I really started to get invested in characters, get over all those thoughts I had in my head that I've discussed previously in the video, I really have been enjoying this and a lot of the depressing stuff people talk about has definitely started to happen, but I, I don't know if it's an unpopular opinion, but I don't think it comes off as, you know, voyeuristic or like the term people love to say is like misery porn. Like I think that in terms of a character study and how trauma affects character, like all this stuff is, you know, it's not over the top. Like, yes, obviously it's a lot of negative things happening to the one person, but they all kind of relate back to each other. Like he has all this stuff from like injuries or like all this self-hate that comes from injuries and the injuries go back to this event and then, then that event was caused by this event and it all traces back to the fact that he was abandoned as a baby. So I don't know, I just think that people are really harsh on it and I mean obviously I've still got a lot to go but I am really enjoying it. And something I actually wanted to talk about was the parallels of abuse in these two books. So obviously like this features you know very classical um, like sexual abuse towards him as a child, then again as an adult there is some rape scenes which were very uncomfortable and very violent but like I said I don't think they were voyeuristic or over the top, like I think they were brutal and disgusting but 
Like, I think they were well written. And I think in contrast, Fifty Shades, the abuse is all more... Like, he never physically hurts her. It's all just, like, controlling what she does, where she goes, who she talks to, like, when she sees her friends, what she can wear. Um, all sorts of stuff like that. Like, everything to do with her job, like, all that sort of stuff. And, I mean, they're both abuse, but it's, like, this is, like, physical and sexual abuse, and this is, like, emotional and, yeah, emotional abuse. So, I don't know, it's just very interesting reading these at the same time and seeing, like, very two very abusive situations paralleled but one of them is like very dark depressing brutal and the other one is like although Anna is very self-aware she does kind of like laugh off she's like oh my controlling man like oh he's such a control freak and like she argues with him and there has been some really good arguments where she's really stood up for herself but overall you know there's no consequences to it like she loves him and you know he always uses so she was like trying to argue with him and trying to prove a point that he can't control everything that she does and he just keeps trying to distract her and trying to get her to have sex with him and then she does it because she's like oh you know he is really hot and it's like it's frustrating to read to be honest like I do think they're like a fun couple to read about but like I've said before like obviously in real life this is the this is so toxic um as fictional characters it's kind of interesting but yeah that's my thoughts so far just a little talk about abuse and these two books which I thought was worth saying I'm at page 607 of A Little Life and honestly, kind of want to cry, but not out of sadness, but out of like happiness for how loved Jude is, like the people he has in his life care about him so deeply and like so unconditionally and it's just like so beautiful actually. Um, I don't know that it's going to get sadder from here, but this part here, like, I don't really have any spoilers, but after something that should be sad happened but he's just surrounded by so much love like his friends his family that i don't know like it's just really lovely actually so i just finished a uh, little life and i have not cried at anything in like my own life in like four years five years i'm not a crier this book made me cry like not like the hysterical crying that other people do but like i cried i'm not gonna lie and i was like I can't believe I'm crying at this, but this was just so beautifully written. It is like a masterpiece, honestly. And I can't believe that this vlog starts with me being like, oh, I don't really care about this book. Like, I don't really want to read it. It's boring. Like, thrown it. And now I'm like, this book is so good. Like, she's just a genius. Like, actually a genius. Like, the way that everything comes together, like, the way that it can all, I think it can all be traced back pretty realistically to his childhood trauma. I don't think that the things that happen in this book are gratuitous or over the top or melodramatic. Like, I think that everything makes sense and everything, like, feels realistic. Like, obviously, it's very heightened and the chances of so many bad things happening to one person, yes, it's slim, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. And I just think that, I don't know, I think this is honestly a masterpiece. And I can't believe I waited this long to read it. Like, I've been wanting to read this book for so long and I kept it off. And now I'm like, why did I wait so long? I... Honestly, absolutely loved it. I also feel like the reason I cried at the ending isn't necessarily the reason other people have cried, but I need to like watch some vlogs or read some more reviews and stuff. Cause I actually tried really hard to avoid spoilers. Like I knew I knew some general like plot points, like basically what people would give in a trigger warning, I knew what those type of things were, but yeah, I don't know. I just absolutely love this. I think it's so important as well that a book exists that is so popular and so mainstream right now that is about male trauma and you know that men can be victims of sexual abuse, sexual assault, um, self-harm, eating disorders, grief, abusive relationships, um, all sorts of things because I think a lot of these things are still seen as you know women's issues and although yes obviously Jude as a man who's being abused by other men I think it's still important to highlight that you know there is male victims of these things um, so yeah I love this book so much. I actually planned on unhauling it after I finished it because it's so thick. But now I'm like, do I want to unhaul it? Like, I don't know. Um, I still don't have any updates on Fifty Shades. I can't, I honestly don't know if I can bring myself to like read this after finishing this because this was so good. And like, obviously I'm enjoying this, like it's fun, but it's just so different. Like obviously this is like not a masterpiece and this is in my opinion. So yeah, like this is fun. 
but this is art. You know what I mean? So I'm going to wait. <laughs> I will read some more of this tonight because I really want to finish. It's the second last day of January right now. I think it's 30th today. And I want to finish this before January ends, but we'll see. Anyway, I'll report back with a little recap at the end. So I have just finished Fifty Shades Freed, which is the third and final book in the original Fifty Shades trilogy. And it was fun. I did enjoy it. I think it was the worst of the three books. My favourite was Fifty Shades Darker and then the first one and then this one last. And I do own the first book, so she rewrote the whole series from Christian Grey's perspective and I own the first one of those, but I'm not going to read it right now. Like, <laughs> I will read it eventually at some point this year, but I need a little bit of a break right now. So yeah, these were fun. Like, I'm glad I read them. They were like, definitely, like, they are iconic, you know what I mean? Like, they have a, their place in pop culture. They were a moment and I'm glad that I... <laughs> understood what the hype was about because let's be real like they are really fun like easy reads and I'm glad I gave them a chance I honestly would recommend like if you want something that's just fun easy doesn't need much brain power this is the one to go for but obviously as you know from my last clip A Little Life perfection I loved it this has been like a full day since I read A Little Life and you know it's just sitting on it still like I really do love it like I think it was perfection and I don't know I'm not going to repeat myself, but I loved it and I would highly recommend it. I also recommend this as well, but like for different reasons. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, please subscribe. I know it's a bit messy. I know I started off the week and I was like, oh, I'm just going to do like a random weekly vlog and then it turned into basically like a little life breathing vlog, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway and I will see you in my next video. Oh, subscribe and then I'll see you in my next video.